tell me some of the biggest misconceptions on them first. And then can you just give a brief synopsis of what they actually do and why they're beneficial? So GLP-1 agonists, which you guys know, like the Ozempics and Wagovis and Mangjaros, you know, those include semaglutide, which is the first generation. That's like Ozempic. And then Mangjaro is the second generation tirzepatide. And the GLP-1 agonist basically glucagon-like peptide receptor agonists sit on a glucagon-like peptide receptor. And they have all sorts of benefits. One is controlling blood glucose, right? Which is where they first got their start was in treating diabetes very effectively. And then what they found out is, wow, actually, they also worked very well for weight loss yep. at a little bit higher dose. So they that was a much bigger boon than diabetes ever would be. And they made it into the weight loss, loss world. Of course, once they made it into the weight loss world, everybody started using them and they became hugely controversial. Like number one, everybody's cheating to lose weight and they have all these horrendous side effects, right? That's all you read about in the press. It's like now, you know, somebody has a complete gastric obstruction and people are dying and people are losing all their muscle mass. And I will tell you guys, I know GLP-1s very well, and that is complete and utter bullshit. So these are very – I will tell you, we used GLP-1 agonists for a long time before they ever got into the weight loss world, not just for diabetes, but in our longevity world for all sorts of other things because there are GLP-1 receptors on every organ in your body, including your brain, including your liver, including your kidneys, your immune cells, and your muscle. And in fact, used appropriately – when they were first designed, they were actually found to push glucose into the muscle, so help with muscle building in a diabetic population who mm -hmm. was having trouble with muscle building. They would actually help muscle building. So really what happened is people started dosing these inappropriately. They started using them you know, sort of rampantly, and you started seeing the bad consequences of doing anything that way. If I take a GOP-1 agonist and I have no appetite and I stop eating, I will lose muscle, right? Right. And these are very effective drugs at lowering your appetite. I will tell you, remarkably so. People just don't have cravings to eat. The problem is if you don't have cravings to eat, you also stop eating all your protein. Mm -hmm. and if I stop eating my protein, I will lose muscle mass. But you can, if you can ma maintain somebody eating high protein while they're on the GLP-1 agonist, which is sometimes hard, and you have to dose appropriately to do that, right. they will put on muscle. So you, as long as you get their protein take up into the 100 gram, 120 gram you know, or higher, depending on how big you are, range, you will put on muscle on these and you will lose fat. The, the fat, the ozempic face, yeah, you get ozempic face because you lose all the fat in your face. That's a consequence of losing weight, no matter how you lose weight. But the loss of muscle should not occur. And I do not see it in my patients because I maintain that they have to stay hydrated and they have to eat protein or I will take them off the drug. So I have them send me their macronutrient profiles. I watch what they're eating. If they're not eating enough, I'm like, okay, we're going to pull back the drug because you're not eating enough. Mm -hmm. So the other thing is that if you're taking these at high doses and not eating enough fiber and things like that, then you start to get horrible constipation and people started getting gastric obstructions. So again, not dosed appropriately, not people following appropriate diets to be on these drugs. You don't, I don't see that in my population of patients ever. You will see nausea, side effects, things like that. Sometimes you have to dose them down. But the most powerful thing about these drugs is, and I take a low dose GLP-1 every day, is their effect for other structures. Like you talked about your liver. They are super liver protective. I had an autoimmune liver disease, almost had to have a liver transplant about 20 years ago. I was taking an antibiotic that kicked off an autoimmune liver disease. And talk about liver functions. Mine were in the thousands, like 1,500. Um, and, you know, finally got it under control, but my liver has never been perfect. Mm -hmm. And so I take these because they're very liver protective. They're in phase four trials for brain, so for dementia prevention. So they're super protective to brain, which is the main reason I take it is brain yeah. and liver because I had a mother who died of dementia. I do not want that. So I take a low dose. At a low dose, you will not lose weight. I don't need to lose weight. I'm 5'9", 130 pounds. So I don't need to lose weight. <laughs> but the key is I want a small dose of these in, as a neural protective. So they're going to get authorization probably in a year or two for dementia prevention. And then you look at immune function. The GOP-1 agonists are tremendous for helping T-cell function. So what we do a lot, almost all my patients are on GLP-1 agonists as a longevity agent to protect their immune system, protect their liver. It also converts brown fat or white fat into brown fat. So it takes metabolically inactive fat and turns into metabolically active fat. So they have so many benefits. And the, the press you're reading, number one, bad press sells. So, of course, you're going to pick up a magazine that says, Ozempic killing people, right? Perfect. And not, you know, Ozempic's the best wonder drug. So, so. And, and because these are all over the place, you can buy them from any source online now and use them however you want and mm -hmm. not know. If I don't 
they make you not want to drink too. So you, you basically, you got to drink water, you've got to eat protein and you'll do fine on these drugs, but they should be done with somebody who knows what they're doing and under guidance or learn more about them. But I, I think these are mark incredible drugs. You know, if you look at the difference, so there's semaglutide, then there's eptide, and now retitrutide, which is going to be even the best of the bunch um, mm-hmm. with even low, lower side effect profile and more benefits. They all are good. They just are a little bit better each generation. So guys, please, please stop listening to the press on this. These are such valuable drugs. And they also have some really interesting benefits for helping change behaviors. So very interestingly, really? yeah. So you can use them in addiction. So people who have alcohol or drug addictions, they will actually change the desire to drink or take your drugs. But you can also use them for positive behavior reinforcements. There was a great study done. If you put somebody on GLP-1 agus and had them exercise continuously, they will more likely adopt that into their lifestyle than if they were not on the GLP-1 agonist. So they seem, because of their brain effect, they actually help brain some of the neural pathways that form to help us reinforce both good or unreinforced bad behaviors. So these are really cool drugs. And and I I think maybe one of the most advantageous longevity drugs has come into existence in our past 10 years, honestly. So for somebody that wanted the benefits like with the liver and, you know, preventing dementia issues and things like that which one do you recommend and what kind of dose well, are you thinking? so I, it, I i usually end up semaglutide just because it's less expensive and it works oh. right but if people can't tolerate semaglutide for some reason or they can afford tears appetite uh then i'll go to that but i do semaglutide just because it's cheaper and, and it's effective the glp1 egg is in other cells without anything else are effective. So usually I'll use GLP-1 and, I, and you microdose it. So instead of doing a, a, a bigger dose once a week, you do a small dose and we're talking about, so a weight loss dose, for instance, of semaglutide is going to be somewhere around five milligrams a week. So 2.5 milligrams twice a week or five milligrams once a week. So we'll use like maybe 0.5 milligrams twice a week or three times a week. So you're, okay. you're never getting into the weight loss range of the drug, the be- but you're getting the benefit. And smaller people, you can even use a smaller, you might even use 0.25 milligrams three times a week. So you can dose these like a three time a week is, I think, ideal when you're doing them on a preventative basis. I get like injection fatigue. So I usually do twice a week at like a 0.5 milligram twice a week dosing for its protective benefits on myself. Okay. Selfishly, I was curious about that for myself. Yeah. I mean, I will tell you, you just from your longevity bend and your biohacker bend, these are really good drugs. Yes. For a whole lot of reasons. But the cognitive is really important. None of us want to lose brain function. And that's why I wanted to bring this up because I'm versed on them, but not anywhere near like I am other peptides at all. Yeah. Because I guess for multiple reasons, but one is because most of the people that I coach and deal with are not really looking for some of that. And now that I know the other benefits of that too, it's, it's, that's significant, especially when it right. comes to liver, you know, um, right. The liver protective benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Cause a lot of bodybuilders, especially using oral, you know, toxic steroids, especially that right, you need be- to do some liver protection. Yeah. And these are yeah. actually very, very useful for liver protection. Excellent. That's awesome. Are there any other benefits there that people aren't aware of that you can think of that are important to, to disclose? I mean, I think you, 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 there's really not one. If you look at, I have a great little picture I show all my patients that, you know, basically shows, you know, and there's kind of, if you name an organ system, these are going to be beneficial for their muscles, there's immune, it's kidney, it's liver, it's brain. So there's not much left here. But interestingly, there's two studies that have come out in the past two years that show musculoskeletal. So actually in an orthopedic realm that they are preventative against osteoarthritis as well. So they, they appear to slow progression or even halt progression of degenerative joint disease. And that's because when you look at these diseases, these are immune mediated diseases and I can modify them by modifying the immune system. Um, so I think that's a benefit that, that we're just learning about and kind of just exploring, but probably that group of patients who have, you know, multi-joint osteoarthritis, who have had, you know, a knee replaced and a hip replaced, those are other people who be, should be thinking about being on these drugs too. 